guys. I am here in Madisonville, Tennessee at this trailer doing some renovations for um, <clears throat> the uh, owner. And um, one of the things I have to do is replumb the whole house. I have to run all new water lines, hot and cold, right? And so I was thinking about this, you know, today I want to talk to you about the fact that as a society and as a church, we are together, but alone. Like we have this proximity to people, but we don't have this internal posture of connectedness with people, right? And I think this has been my experience in churches is that I'm surrounded by people I'm doing the stuff, right? I'm in the small groups, I'm going to Sunday morning, but I'm not connecting with people. And there seems to be a disconnect between spending time with people and actually coming together with people. And I think that's true of the church. I think it's true of our culture. And so like, how do we get back to deeper relationships in the church and in our culture? It feels like we've come so far away from all of that. Like, and I was thinking about like, how do we start to step back away from this place we've come to and I had this thought on the way as I was driving out here because it's a bit of a drive for me because I live closer to Knoxville and my, the thought was when you're moving backwards coming to stand still is an improvement right and so I was thinking about like for this plumbing job I have over 200 feet of piping to lay that's a big job there's a lot of connections there are nine different sources that I need to run hot and cold to, you know, faucets. And that's a lot of connections. That's a lot of feet, right? It's a lot to do with this plumbing job. Instead of thinking about how do I lay 200 feet and, and, you know, dozens of different connections. Instead, I was like, well, where do I start? And I figured it out. I figured out with this plumbing job where to start. The point with where we are as a culture and as a church that I wanted to make is we, I think we all know we're becoming more disconnected, more segregated, more separated, more polarized, right? We all know that, but it's like, so what's the step? What's the step that would get us from moving backwards to standing still? This is the step. Who are you the most unlike? Who do you hate the most? What group do you hate the most? What kind of person do you hate the most? Find that kind of person and start to spend time with them. Not to critique them, not to judge them, not to tell them they're wrong and why they're wrong and how they're not like you and why that's not right, but just to spend time with them and get to know them. Because like, if you're a white person and you hate black people, find a black person to become friends with. If you're a straight person and you hate gay people, find a gay person to spend time with. If you're a Christian and you hate atheists, find an atheist to spend time with. If you're an atheist and you hate Christians, <laughs> if you're a black person and you hate white people, if you're a gay person and you hate straight Christians. So, you know, I was just thinking about back my own personal journey. This is what I've done. So in my early 20s, this is kind of the first time I think I did this. In my early 20s, I was going to a conservative evangelical church. I was very a very sheltered person. And I had this really sheltered bubble that I lived in. But... What I started to do during that time was hang out with my brother who was a hippie and his hippie friends. And they were all living at this, this farmhouse with um, Uncle Jerry. It was Uncle Jerry in the farmhouse. And then they got kicked out of that and they moved into the random house. Um, and they all like rented that house. And I started to kind of observe the difference between my conservative evangelical Christian church culture and these hippie dudes. <laughs> and you know, there was this one point I remember specifically where I was at church and I was smoking a cigarette before I left. The next Sunday, there was this family that I was close with and I had actually grown up, you know, with them a little bit. I had babysat their three daughters and one of the daughters, she was a little older now, she came up to me after church and she said, my parents told me I can't be around you anymore. And they saw me smoking and they were like, oh, he's the wrong kind of person. And they actually told their daughter to not talk to me anymore because I smoked and I thought, is that all it takes? Is that all it takes for me to be excommunicated from this church crowd? And then I was thinking about my the hippie guys and like I was thinking about how they are 
And what I realized was like that my, my brother's hippie friends who I had become friends with, shout out to Josiah and Samo and Obadiah and Uncle Jerry and Crazy Brian. <laughs> Those guys loved each other. They looked out for each other. They lived together. They, they took care of each other. When one was struggling, they were there. They were such a tight-knit community. And then here I was with my conservative Christian evangelical crowd. And it only took me smoking a cigarette once after church in the parking lot to be considered unclean. To be considered not worth relationship, you know? So that was like, that was kind of one of my first experiences of like spending time with people very different than me. And then, you know, throughout my life, I've continued to do this. I remember when I went back to college, Bible college, the second time I was at Kentucky Christian University. And there was this one professor, Dr. Jones, and uh, he taught systematic theology. It was a two semester course. At that time, I was on this journey more into the Holy Spirit and, and, and seeking to be in relationship with the Holy Spirit. And like, so systematic theology was like the opposite direction of where I was going. And I remember sitting in class day after day and just, it was like so grating for me to, to hear someone talk about how we could have all the, all the theology and all the boxes and we could have the answers to all the questions, but yet knowing God was this foreign thing in this environment. And so I just remember like feeling so dissident towards this class and this professor. But you know what I did? Because I felt so at odds with this professor and this topic, I decided to start to sit with this professor at lunch every day. And I did. And I just started talking with him. I just started getting to know him. And I got to know him. And I came to understand who he was more, why he favored this kind of more in-the-box Christianity, orthodox, legalistic Christianity. And I began to have compassion for him and understand him. At the end of those two semesters, I remember he really loved old Christian literature. And I gave him a second edition Pilgrim's Progress that was like from 1908 or something. It was really old and it was this, because I collect antique books. And I gave this to him as a gift and I said, you know, I really appreciate you. And I appreciate all the, your wisdom and the time that you spent trying to teach me your wisdom. Cool, huh? At two different times in my life, I've spent time with atheists. I was in this one, Facebook group called Agnostics, Atheists, and Theists, where, you know, we just discussed it. I remember how fearful I was of just talking with atheists. And then not that long ago, I was, I got to be good friends with an atheist and we had a lot of deep conversations. I just got to know this guy and got to care about this guy. Time and time again, guys, my journey and my life has been so enriched and, and, expanded because I've chosen to spend time with people the most unlike myself. This is what we need to do as Christians, as non-Christians, as everyone. We need to start to spend time with people the most unlike ourselves, to make space for people the most unlike ourselves, to understand that they are human, they have struggles, they're doing the best they can do. If we cannot spend time with people the most unlike ourselves, well, this is what we're gonna do. We're already pulled apart. We're just gonna continue to get pulled more and more and more apart. That's my challenge to you guys. Pick the person you think is the worst, the most opposite of who you are. Spend time with them. Don't judge them. Don't condemn them. Don't tell them they're a sinner. Don't tell them that their sins make them unacceptable to God. Just spend time with them get to know them. You will be challenged in who you are. God will use that person to challenge your bias, your judgmentalness, your hypocriticalness. God will use that person to start to draw out of you because you'll have to face them and you'll have to go, hmm, not what I thought. Not what I thought. You know what? Now that I'm coming to know this person, I can't judge them anymore. Now that I'm coming to understand who they are, I can accept them. I can accept them as a human. I can accept them as a person. I can accept them even as a Christian, even though they're whatever, even though they're gay, or even though they're straight, or even though they're conservative, or even though they're liberal. I can still accept them even though they're not like me. If we are going to halt this disintegration of our society, we're going to have to stop retreating from people that are not like us. We're going to, and to do that, we're going to have to get really practical, really personal, down into the nitty gritty. We're going to have to say, whoever I hate, I need to get to know someone like that. 
Jesus said, what you do to the least of these, you do to me. Guess what, guys? The least of these is very personal. It's different from person to person. Who is the least of these to you? Consider that spending time with the least of, of these in your eyes is spending time with Jesus and that Jesus is calling you to spend time with who you consider to be the least. Guys, you, you, you cannot even make the excuse today with the social media environment we are in. You can find someone to get to know through social media. You don't have to find them in your own personal environment, right? There is no excuse for you today. Find that person that is the least in your eyes and look at them as if you are spending time with Jesus because you are and open your heart and understand that Jesus is going to challenge your pants off through spending time with this person. That's my suggestion. We're all becoming more and more isolated, more and more alone, even with the people we're around. Because this is what happens, guys, and this is where I'll end. <clears throat> when you establish society, social groups, belonging through being the right kind of person, guess what? You will not feel comfortable even with the people that you've accepted because it's like, well, am I the right kind of person now? Are they the right kind of person? What if they find out that I do this because I know that as a group, we don't accept that. We don't. And so it becomes this ever shrinking purity culture meritocracy where it's like, well, nobody's good enough. And so there's so much fear when we try to establish our society, our social groups, our group belonging around being the right kind of person and believing the right kind of things. It just doesn't work. It's why we are where we are. And to be honest, Christians have led the charge in building groups around believing the right things in order to be accepted. And so Christians should lead the charge in the opposite direction, all right? <laughs> Woo! Hey guys, guess what? I gotta get to this plumbing job, but I hope that really challenges you today and gives you a very practical step to take to step back from this retreating stance and to at least stand still in the space of starting to get to know somebody that you consider to be the least. All right, love you guys. Bye.